This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Blue Apron. Cook something new and interesting tonight when you visit blueapron.com slash macvoices. They provide the ingredients and recipes. You have all the satisfaction of preparing and enjoying the food and expanding your culinary horizons in the process. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. I have my Blue Apron deliveries made to my office because there's usually no one home to receive them and I don't want someone making off with my Blue Apron boxes. So when my most recent delivery arrived, it wasn't a surprise. I sat it on the edge of my desk to take home at the end of the day. An afternoon appointment arrived, and during the usual pleasantries, she noticed my Blue Apron box, and that was it. For the next 10 minutes, she raved about how she was a Blue Apron subscriber, how often she received her orders, and how much she loved it. She talked about the great food. She talked about the convenience of having that great food delivered right to her door in just the right quantities to prepare the included recipes. She talked about those recipes and how they've expanded her horizons and those of her husband, who helps prepare the Blue Apron meals. The conversation sounded like an advertisement for Blue Apron, but it was not only unsolicited, it was sincere, all because my Blue Apron box was sitting on my desk. Now, I think some other folks in my office will be trying Blue Apron. Judging by her enthusiasm, I'm betting some folks in her office have already tried it. You just can't keep a secret when someone is that enthusiastic. You can join them right now and get three free meals delivered free to your door by visiting blueapron.com slash macvoices. Fill in your food preferences and delivery options, and soon you'll be cooking and enjoying something brand new for dinner. That's blueapron.com slash macvoices for your first three meals free with free delivery just for listening to Mac Voices. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Thanks to Blue Apron for their support of Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, as you know, we kicked off the Road to Mac Stock series with Mike Potter a little while ago, and now we're going to talk to all the presenters, or at least as many of them as we can possibly get on. I can't think of a better way to start uh, that process than to talk to Mr. David Ginsburg of the Suburban Chicago Apple User Group. He's going to talk, well, I'll let him tell you what he's going to talk about at MacStock. David, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Chuck. Uh, thanks for having me, as always. Hey, it's, o- it's always fun, and, and I really appreciate you uh, making some time to talk to us a little bit about what yeah. you're going to be talking about at MacStock. Um, as we said, you know, we, we, we definitely don't want the presenters to do the session here or give away no. a lot. It's more talk around the topic a little bit, give people an idea of what they're going to hear from from you in particular at this point. Um, so your topic is one that always intrigues me because it seems so timely and it just it doesn't seem to get old. Yeah, and that's the reason why I picked it. And then obviously spinning off of the last two, my last two sessions I've done, gosh, I can't believe this would be my third year now of the, of the three years of, the, of Max Stock's existence. Um, I, w- I wanted to talk a little bit more about efficiencies. You know, efficiencies is such a key word. I mean, I'm dealing with it in the corporate world, and I think we're dealing with it all all the time, trying to be efficient with things. And people sometimes aren't so efficient with using an iOS device, whether it be an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, I did do uh, a short session in my Apple user group uh, about uh, Siri, and I had a, a, a lot of great, great positive responses on it. And I think, uh, and I had already intended to put that as, as an efficiency, just understanding and using Siri to your to your benefit, because people don't realize how great Siri is, and people kind of get scared of it, or they think they kind of they think it's kind of silly, or they don't want to use it. I think that one of that one of those pieces is going to really stand things out in, in my talk. So, um, as well as you know. The, uh, two of the other things I thought were inefficient would be dealing with the widgets and dealing with the, uh, the all the views and that, um, and, and utilizing those and getting getting your information quickly. Yeah, that when when I read the description, I thought, boy, there are a lot of ways you could go with this. You could obvi- yep. obviously talk about Siri. Um, you can talk about some of the built-in things in in iOS. Um, you can talk about you ut- all the utilities and all kinds of stuff. I mean, apps out there just just. You could do three sessions on apps, um, exactly, and 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 not have a problem. You, you mentioned though you're talking doing a lot of this in in business. Um, do you think this is going to be a session for business people, or is it going to be for other other non business users, or is it going to cut across both lines? Well, I think it'll, be, it'll cut across both lines really. Um, Again, because I work in, in, in the enterprise and the enterprise world, you know, when I ever whenever time I do these types of sessions for my for my user community, um, it. it 
I think people find that it's 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 very efficient you know, when they use something some of these tools that I that I show. So I think the the, the presentation itself I think will be very uh, topical in the sense that it'll make it very easy to understand why these things are are good and make make thing, make your life easier. You know, with the with the widget view and with the notification center and Siri. Those are the kind of the three topics I'm, I'm kind of kind of focus on this on this talk again i only have 20 minutes so like you said I, and i i when i first sent this stuff to mike i gave him a you know pretty pretty good in-depth thing of looking at some of these things as well as adding uh things like battery life and trying to be more efficient with that um uh but again trying to squeeze all this into 20 minutes is gonna is always a challenge but i, I think i can pull this off with these uh with these topics I, I love the idea that Mike is doing most of the sessions 20 minutes long. Uh, oh. it, just, it, it gives people a taste. You can give them some very practical things, but you aren't going to bore them down, bog, bog them down, or bore them. Um, if, right. if if they're not iOS users or not looking for iOS efficiency, they they only have 20 minutes until the next topic. Um, although last year, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't get bored. I, I didn't want to miss no, any no. of the topics. No, me either. I mean, there's just so many amazing topics, and I see some even more amazing ones this year with the the the, the list of, of all the speakers we're going to have this year and it looks like tim and uh and guy are going to have some fun with uh, uh with the game show i think it is or the i will we'll keep that secret because they, they have some stuff going on but there's going to be some fun as well as some 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 uh, sessions to learn a lot of these things even with the deep dives you know we're gonna, hopefully we're going to have some deep dives i offered to do some deep dive a deep dive on, on iOS since I do spend a lot of time on iOS and iPhone and iPad during my sessions at the Apple user group, uh, you know, what, how ideal it would be. And, and, and the topic is just so popular. I mean, you know, people, there's so many people that have iPhones out there now. And why, why not to, you know, jump on this stuff and just continue to learn about how this device is you know, in, in your life and how efficient you can be using it. David, you mentioned iPhone a couple times. Do you see this, or, or are you planning for this to be principally an iPhone session, or is it crossover with the iPad as well? Well, I'm going to cross over a little bit because um, I mean, I've been noticing lately, I spend a lot of time with this sucker. I mean, I, I really do. <laughs> I think we all do. I mean, I think most of our time during the day, that's that's all we really we're on is our iPhones. Being I have the iPhone 7 Plus, it just I've been in such a thought that I don't know why I, I want to use my iPad as much as I used to in the past. And I know I'm kind of contradicting myself from what I talked about last year with the iPad. And it could it be your full-time computer? Uh, but I, I'm kind of finding that the iPhone, especially the larger size one, it just lets me be more efficient and not have to go dive over to my iPad. But I, then I get to points like, you know, I really I miss this iPad. I want to have this larger size screen and being able to do a lot more things. So I'm kind of kind of cross over to, to, I think, both sides just to kind of let people see, you know, how, how can you be efficient on both ends of the spectrum with the iPad or the iPhone? Which iPad do you have or which iPads? I, 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 well, I, uh, I, 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 I've since sold the 12.9-inch, uh, ah. so I, I decided, uh, yeah, that was a little excessive. So um, I, I, I stuck with the 9.7-inch the uh, iPad Pro, so the, more, the, the current model. And uh, it works great. It's such an efficient uh, uh, device. And in fact, I've noticed that it actually has more sensitivity with Siri than the, iP the iPhone does when it comes to, I'm better not say it, who's through yeah. <laughs> hey, Siri. Uh, uh, and uh, it, because uh, I was sitting right next to my uh right next to my desk here and i was uh playing around with, with alexa which is also behind me and i shouldn't have said that because it just probably lit up uh and uh <laughs> it's hard to not say that uh and it, it actually came up and then there there, there it goes mm -hmm. <laughs> uh it uh it seems to be uh pretty pretty sensitive you know and when i was pretty far away from it so um so i'm i think i'm, I'm seeing that the, the ipad does have some some um, good features when it comes to the sensitivity of of that stuff, but uh, but I guess I think it's going to be a good balance between both of them. Now, I find it really interesting that you decided to sell the large iPad. Um, I, I've I've talked to too many people that have. Oh, yeah. uh, they they I guess because I've got the I've got the seven plus two, um, so they feel like that there's a bigger gap, uh, and and I mean that in a favorable way between yeah. this and and the large iPad as opposed to this and the nine point seven. So now, I've, true confessions, you know, I have both, um, and I and I use them for different things. But I, I don't know. It, it's especially if you're trying to really analyze your productivity on each machine. No, I I think I'm I'm, I'm looking towards the future because you and you and you are both of us are early adopters. Always, we're buying the, the latest models as soon as they come out. Um, 
And I've already see, heard the rumors that the new iPad's going to be coming out uh, possibly in March or April. They're talking here. Um, and it looks like they're going to potentially look at a gap between the 9.7, maybe do a 10, and then go up to the 12.9. I'd like to see what Apple is, is going to do with the, this 12.9. I figured, you know, I saw it early and, and be out and then go back and fight aside. You know what? I'll sell the 9.7, go back to the 12.9. It, it was really large for me. I, that, that, was, that was probably one of the biggest uh, – challenges i had with it because it was just so large when i wanted to use it where i where i was able to compare both of them and i felt you know the 9.7 inch model just seems to be just right for me when it comes to any of the needs i have i still have my macbook pro so i mean you know i'm always using i'm using that as well so uh so it's you know that's that's how it's hard hard to balance between all of these different devices and decide hey what which one is really best for you i mean i like them all and then, as well as i know you do so um i think it's uh, it's something that uh that, that we that we really it's hard hard to hard, hard to challenge on that yeah I, your session last year you know could the large ipad with the well, that was the one you were talking right. about could that be your main computer and you, you made it some really good cases for it i, I thought right. you know my and and certainly not saying you're wrong i think it i think so much of this stuff depends on what it is yeah. that you want to do with it you know and what you need to do with it and for some people it, it, nothing short of a macbook pro is going to do for right. other people you know maybe the the iphone 7 maybe maybe even 6 5 that may be plenty it it just depends on what you want to do yeah, and i and i hate to uh, not to give get a, get a comparison away from apple but there's a good, good another another good analogy. A lot of people ask me, okay, what would be a great computer for you? And then some people just don't want to make a buy a Mac. And I talk to because you know I do work with people who use Windows machines, so they may not want to put the investment into a Mac because it's you know it is expensive. They 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 like to understand that. Well, I have to tell them you're going to get great service, you're going to get a good product, and all that stuff. But you know, I, I but with the advent of the Chromebook and with the way Chromebooks have been going like crazy, selling cheap, maybe someone doesn't want to have. Uh, as much of an advanced laptop as they want, uh, as they'd want something like a Chromebook, you know. So I just use that analogy, kind of throw that into the into the wave here. Of, okay, do, is the iPad 12.9 versus 9.7? That where do you decide there too? All really depends on where you are, budgets. That always matters too. So yeah, I, and I know I, I just had. Um, oh boy, I, I really hate to to <laughs> label anyone but I'll, I'll say it this way i i've recently um worked with some seniors and i think that the ipad in, in fact i know mm -hmm. after after working a little bit with the ipad the ipad is is 98 percent of what they they need or want Agreed. and you don't have the hassles of um some, you don't have nearly the virus concerns if any Absolutely. um you don't have any of the okay i shouldn't i shouldn't visit this website or site i shouldn't web visit that website because they're if it's if it's really bad it's not going to just not going to work on the ipad um email facebook you know all those things yeah, that's what a lot works. of people do and it, it's good enough but and I, and I, i'm sorry no. i i i did i did bring up the uh the topic before the show said i was helping somebody get their their windows machine to, fixed and uh he also has an ipad so i said well why don't you just use that ipad for a while and see how you like it because it, it, i mean he well he likes it because he, he does use it but he still thinks that he needs to have a, a laptop so he decided okay let's get a laptop you know he, he he keeps his songs locally he's not an apple apple music user that kind of thing so he does documents he's doing his taxes you know those kind of things and those can be always a challenge using an ipad but i think we're getting there and as i said last year during my other session i think you could easily do your taxes on on an ipad i don't think it's as as efficient if you're doing a lot of work compared to be, being on like a macbook pro or, or any type of laptop but uh, but i definitely agree with you with that because a lot of seniors really do like these ipads they are simple all they need to do is check email and go on the internet i mean those are the two biggest things that they do all the time and what's the what, it's kind of pointless to have a laptop if you don't feel like you're doing anything else beyond that and to your point from last year's session the apps i don't even know what generation app we're in now but we're, yeah. we're, we're way past that first generation of apps that were, you know are pretty right. simplistic now these are some really powerful apps that can do some really amazing things yeah if that's what you need to do but yeah. sometimes you really don't you know a, a simple yeah. text that you don't need microsoft word Nope. A text editor will do just fine. No, I agree with that. So. And um, but the good thing is, and I've been doing a lot of testing with um, uh, OneDrive and with uh, with uh, all of the Office suite of apps. They're pretty awesome. I mean, I mean, they they really work well, and they uh, they do uh, a very good job of syncing between your devices. I mean, just like with the, like just like iCloud does. Um, so they've really done a 
Microsoft's done a really good job. So if you decide you do want to do some network processing, especially on the iPad, um, I think you're uh, you're in for a good you know, good experience. Well, no matter what level you're using iOS on the iPad or the iPhone, somehow we right. got off onto an iPad. Um, <laughs> you know, th there are always efficiencies. There are always yeah. new tricks and tips that you can learn, and that's what I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to show us, um, even oh, though it's months yeah. away. Um, yeah, no, yeah, a long time yet here, <laughs> but I got a lot to prepare for it, which is great, and then take some time to to give us give everybody a great uh, great uh, presentation. And I mean, I'm looking forward to it. This this every year has just been just. Outstanding. These first two years have been amazing, and we're going on its third year now. And I think it's going to continue on and evolve. Mike and Mike has done such an amazing job with with this uh, with this uh, conference, and I, I I think it just can can continue and uh, continue to just flourish. So. Yeah, and I know we're going to be saying a lot of this over the next couple months as we talk yeah. to all the Mac stock presenters. But, folks, this is this is an opportunity to just come for two days, get some great information, see some great people, yeah. meet some. Old friends, maybe meet some new friends, definitely, and have a have a great time. And with it being just outside of Chicago, it's pretty easy to get to from pretty much anywhere. Yep. So you know, MacStock. Uh, let's see, what is it? MacStock twenty seventeen dot com. Right. Um, we'll get you all the information. Um, get registered. Get your hotel rooms now, and join David and I and a lot of our friends. And we're gonna have a ball. We are really gonna have an actual ball. And and I'm there's like I said, there's a lot of amazing speakers coming up. We had. Uh, uh, folks from uh, from the Mac Observer and, and and Dave Hamilton's coming, which is great, and we've got some some, some great speakers coming uh, for this year, and uh, I think uh, you'd, you'd be a shame if you didn't come out and see it. Yeah, a lot of a lot of returning speakers, a lot of new speakers. Yep. So absolutely. Um, okay, so when you're not telling us uh, how how to be efficient with iOS, uh, where can the folks find you? What are you up to? Well, uh, again, I, I'm continue on to be president of the uh, the suburban Chicago Apple users. Um, we have a, just an absolutely great uh, group of folks, and I, and I can't thank you enough. You actually spoke at our our, uh, our group last month uh, virtually, and it turned out to be just an amazing event, and everybody really enjoyed it. it had a lot of great great feedback, and uh, and we have a great venue that we we, we uh, have it at the American An uh, Society of Anesthesiologists, and locally in Schaumburg, Illinois. Um, our group is is doing really well, and and that, that, that's great to hear. For a lot of these Apple user groups, have been kind of uh, going on the <laughs> little low end of things, but uh, we've got a lot of interest, which is which I really uh, am appreciative of. And I also do a iPhone special interest group. That's why it gives me kind of be the the subject matter expert with this stuff. And we spend just two hours of just I just it's like I get to sit around and talk about iPhone and iPad and iOS and with all my closest friends and, and we, we and they get to ask me questions and i think a lot of people just love doing that i know we got about 30 40 people come out every time we do it so it's it's uh it's a lot of fun and i think uh, people need to, to to see that that's uh that's something that a lot of people like to talk about and they don't get to do that and you go into the apple stores yeah you get a little bit of an experience there but it's changing it's very busy in those stores and this is a good alternative to be able to 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 do these kind of things and hang out well, great. I will plan. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking between now and then on the Mac jury or something. Um, but if not, I'd love or, to be there. <laughs> yeah, but at the very least, I will definitely see you in July. For um, sure. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We're on the road to Mac Stock Conference and Expo. I hope you will join us. It's July, it's just outside Chicago, and it's a great time. So please check out Mac Stock, yeah, MacStock2017.com. Get registered and join us. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.